What's going on everybody? You see a Jaguar here with JinJag.com and this Sunday the 2-1 Jacksonville Jaguars will be traveling up to New York to face off against the 1-2 New York Jets. Super excited about this game. The Jaguars have a chance to go 3-1 for the first time since 2007 and let's go ahead and preview this matchup. Alright, so before I start this video, I want to give a quick shout out to my man Jets Central. He is a Jets YouTuber and he does all kinds of Jets videos. He does NFL predictions. He does all kinds of stuff. I've actually had him on the channel before. Awesome channel. Definitely check it out. He posted a Jaguars versus Jets preview earlier, so I'll put that down in the description box. And <laughs> he actually uh he actually predicted the Jaguars to lose to the Jets, but you know, we'll let that slide. Definitely goes Chills Tech had this video, but let's go ahead and get into this matchup. So going into this season, everybody pretty much nationally thought that the Jets were tanking. You saw them release guys like Eric Decker, like Brandon Marshall Walk. I believe Nick Mangle was on our team. He's no longer on the team anymore. He's probably retiring, but just letting go a ton of talent and it just really seemed like with this quarterback deep class that they were pretty much getting rid of a bunch of players, scrapping their roster, and trying to move forward with a new, young, rebuilding team. But just when everybody slept on the Jets, especially in the AFC East, uh, the, they go out and play the Dolphins, and they actually pretty much handled the Dolphins. Uh, they beat them by a final score of like 20-6 to 6 or 20-7 to 7 or something like that. It was basically 20 to nothing, but uh, they got a, the t Dolphins got a touchdown at the end of the game. Now, this game, it seemed like it was a big... Uh, difference in score, but it was kind of a close game. It was kind of frustrating to watch, honestly, but just because it was kind of a lot of sloppy football. But uh, they pretty much locked down Jay Cutler and pretty much stopped their run game in general. And I'm almost, I'm honestly kind of glad that this happened, just because so the Jaguars won't be sleeping. It's not like they're playing a really, really good. You know, they don't think they're playing a really, really bad team. So, but even so, like a lot of people see this game as a trap game. I don't think the Jaguars will see it as a trap game because we just haven't won enough games to really be in trap games. I don't think uh, we're not like you know we're not like a team like say like the Ravens or a team like I don't know like the Patriots or something like that. A team that like goes to the playoffs consistently and can just like overlook opponents. I mean we're a team that we're a young team. They were having a lot of fun in just the two wins that they got. So. I don't think that they're going to be sleeping at all this game. But the strong part of the Jets team is definitely in their defense. You know, they got a good defensive line. Grant, they, they traded away, they traded away, what's his face, um, Richardson, Sheldon Richardson for uh, Jermaine Curse. But also on a defensive line, they've got Leonard Williams, who was a first round pick in 2015. They've got uh, Wilkerson, who's been around the league for a while. Uh, really, really stout defensive line. But, you know, the highlight of their defense is definitely Jamal Adams. He was their first-round pick and you know, this most recent 2017 draft. If Leonard Fournette was, were to have been taken, Coughlin pretty much said that um, Jamal Adams would have been the guy that they would have taken. So, uh, But Jamal Adams, man, this guy is a freaking beast. Uh, he, they use him as like a jack-of-all-trades kind of player. I mean, I've seen him up there playing free safety. Uh, I saw him playing box safety last game. I saw him covering tight ends, you know, going in on blitzes. Uh, this guy is an extremely talented dude, and they really try to find ways to use him all over the field. So if the Jets want any chance to be able to win this game, they're going to have to play great defense against us. They, they, they're probably going to want the final score to be like, you know, 14-10, to 10, you know, 17-14. Uh, they, they need to hold them down just because they're, the Jets' offense isn't necessarily as good. Um, you know, they've got an older running back in uh, Matt Forte. They've got, you know, not really very many playmakers at wide receiver. Uh, their quarterback, Josh McCown, is just a uh, journeyman. He's been all over the NFL. Uh, he's got, like, pretty much a 500 touchdown to interception ratio. But, um, you know, they're, they're, the way they're going to want to win is they're going to want to win with their defense. And for them to win, they have to create some turnovers because – uh, they were going to have to basically set their offense up in a position where they are, have a short field 
to be able to milk out as many points as possible. But when it comes to the Jets offense, uh, you know, I'm not necessarily worried about the wide receivers. I'm not necessarily worried about the run game. But what they have to do to be able to succeed against the Jaguars, I think, is use, uh, you know, their hidden talent over there in Austin Zafirian Jenkins. You know, I liked him at Tampa Bay, but he wasn't into football at all. But um, he went in the offseason and rehabbed and all this kind of stuff. And then he's come back a much more focused player. And really with their wide receivers, I just don't think that they're skilled enough to really be able to get many yards on A.J. Boye and Jalen Ramsey. I mean, you saw Jalen Ramsey and A.J. Boye play against Mike Wallace and Jeremy Macklin last week. They have a much better wide receiving core, and they held Joe Flacco to 28 passing yards. I'm going to say that again because it, it sounds nice. 28 passing yards. So uh, they're going to have to really get some mismatches when it comes to, um, you know, getting awesome Safari and Jenkins open. Um, you know, I think that that'll be a good test for Miles Jack. Miles Jack's able to lock people down. I don't really have too many worries about that, but... My main worry is with uh, the Jets' defense and uh, whether they're able to force Blake Bortles, Blake Bortles to get some turnovers. Now, three keys for me for the Jaguars to win this game, I think, are limit the penalties. Uh, the penalties the last two weeks, they've been really, really hurting us. Um, expe like, you know, especially against Tennessee, uh, we were that was really the main reason why I think we lost. We kept getting these um, you know, third and 18 kind of situations, and... Uh, that's pretty much setting ourselves up for failure when it comes to our offensive plan because, um, you know, it seems like our offensive plan is just to feed Fournette and take as much weight off Borles' shoulders as possible. And Borles just isn't a good enough quarterback to be able to quarterback his way out of a third and 18 kind of situation. So, and then last week, really, t or the penalties were like stopping us more than the Ravens' defense was. Our drives were mainly stopping because we were penalizing ourselves. So, uh, we have to be able to limit those penalties. It's going to, you know, we just have to work to get better at that because we can't go throughout the season having a bunch of penalties. But also, no turnovers. Um, I don't, I, this is, shouldn't be a game. I don't want Borles to throw any turnovers. It shouldn't be a game where uh, we should, even though, you know, they have a pretty decent defense, you know, if they're able to get some pressure on them. But my main worry is that um, if the Jets are going to win this game, they're going to have to get some turnovers. They're going to have to set themselves up with some short field situations because, like I said, our defense is really, really stout, and uh, their offense really just doesn't have too much firepower on it. Uh, so, you know, no turnovers, win the turnover battle, um, you know, just try to try to limit that. And also put some pressure on Josh McCown. Um, Josh McCown, he's a guy that gets kind of rattled early. He's a guy that... Uh, tends to throw uh, interceptions in bunches, it seems like. So uh, get some pressure on Josh McCown early. Uh, force some errant throws out to our defensive backfield, who's been playing absolutely amazing these last few weeks. Uh, you know, it's been really, really exciting to uh, watch this defense. But, um, you know, if we get some pressure on McCown, stir up that offense, uh, you know, force some turnovers or for, for some, you know, uh, three and outs and stuff like that. I think that'll give us a real, real good opportunity to win. But with all that said, usually in these preview videos, I don't really like to predict whether we win or lose just because I am extremely biased. I am a huge, huge Jaguar fan, and I think that we have a chance to win like any game this year. So me being like, oh, I think we're going to lose this game. I think we're, you know what I mean? It's just not, I pretty much think we're going to win any game, but I definitely am going to predict a win here. Uh, this is a game that we have to be able to get. Uh, you know, we play probably the weakest team in the AFC East. You know, sorry, Jet Central. But, uh, you know, we had the Houston play uh, the Patriots last week. You know, we have, a real, we have a real chance to get a jump on the AFC South and be able to, uh, you know, beat an opponent, that we, an opponent that we should be able to beat. But I'm um, super excited about this game. Uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Stein, Eastern Time kickoff. So, you know, I'm pumped. I'm pumped about this game. So, uh, Jags have a chance to go do 3-1 and one for the first time since 2007. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think we I think we win this game. But uh, with all that said, this is UCF Jaguar with GenJag.com, and I'm out. Yeah.